Hi, Ben Johnson here to record this week's High Tech Friday. This week we look at Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a website that's going to allow you to flip your classroom so students can view that either at home or at school. Um, you can use that for students who are absent so they can make up the uh, lecture. You can provide that for your subs so that they can simply have students watch that video and hopefully some better learning will happen that way. Uh, you can use it if safety or liability or some other very important information is very important and you need proof that students viewed and paid attention to that uh, information. You can actually have students create their own instructional videos and submit that back to you as a teacher and use those with uh, other students. Uh, you can use it for remediation or as an extension to learning. So quite a few uses. Um, what are the advantages of it? Um, first, you get some proof that the student viewed and completed the, uh, the lecture. You've got some proof of engagement. At least the students have to uh, attempt to answer the questions correctly, and you'll be able to see whether or not they did. You'll get really nice data reports uh, from the class as a whole or as an individual student. In fact, you can even monitor the student's progress while you're away from your classroom, maybe at a district training. Um, you can see which students are, are watching the video, where they're at, how many questions they've answered, whether they've answered those correctly. Um, you can crop long videos so that you only watch the part that you need to in the middle. And then finally, you can add your own audio and comments to uh, videos. Uh, so those are just a few of the advantages of using Edpuzzle compared to just watching a video, say, on YouTube. Um, what does it require? You need to have a video. You can find one from YouTube, TED Talks. Uh, there are all sorts of partners you'll see in a minute. Or you can make your own video, which is probably what a lot of teachers are doing currently that are flipping their classroom. You can use uh, screen recorders like Screencast-O-Matic to capture, say, a PowerPoint that you've made. Um, you can use a smart recorder built on your smart board if you're uh, delivering notes or uh, annotating things. If you do that, make sure that you use a headset with a built-in mic so the audio sounds good. Um, and then finally, if students are going to listen to the uh, lecture in class, make sure that they bring their earbuds or headphones so that you don't have to listen to 35 versions of your lecture going on simultaneously. All right, so let's have a look now at what Ed, Edpuzzle looks like. So in your preferably Chrome, um, go ahead and visit Edpuzzle, and it looks like this. There's about a dozen websites that do this sort of thing now. I like Edpuzzle because it does upload, it does allow you to upload your own videos, and um, a lot of the others require YouTube or uh, programs that could be blocked by by the district. Um, you'll want to go ahead and sign in. I'm already signed in, so I'll lo log out to show you the sign-in process. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll hit Login. You'll choose teacher or student. Obviously, as a teacher, you'll choose that. I'd recommend just uh, signing in with your Google account, or you can create an account. And uh, just pick that account that uh, belongs with your school. And students will do the same. The only difference is students will um, click on student, and you'll give them a code, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, as a teacher, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is uh, um, if you go to the My Content, you'll see any videos that you've uploaded. Um, so go to My Content, hit Create. If you're going to use a YouTube or a TED Talk or some video that's already up, you'll use New Video. If you're going to upload a video that maybe you've recorded with the Smart Board or Screencast-O-Matic, you'll upload that video. Um, I'll just do a new video. And you can see the partners here. Um, obviously, YouTube is going to have the widest selection, but maybe not the, the highest quality. So you're welcome to look at these others, too. And then here you would just type the uh, topic. And um, my example is Lollipop Moment, which is a TED Talk on uh, everyday leadership. And so you would just find all those results, um, preview um, to make sure it's the correct video, and then you'll hit Use It. And then it brings it into this little editor, and this little editor has basically uh, five steps across the top. First step is to crop crop the video, which maybe you want to get rid of some of the fluff at the beginning of the end so that your students don't have to watch um, irrelevant information. So the first step is to crop it. You, that's an optional thing, but if you had a long video, that would make sense. 
Second step is you can record your own audio over the top of the audio that comes with a video, which um, might happen particularly if you recorded a smart board lesson and you didn't narrate it at the time that you were doing the writing. Otherwise, I'm not sure if you would use that, but if you wanted to, you would click the microphone, put your headset on, click the record button here, um, give it permission to use your mouse, allow it up here on the top, and at this point, everything I'm saying into my microphone is being recorded over the top of this video. I'm just going to go ahead and pause that for now. Because I don't want to use that, I'm just going to reset the whole recording. Just keep in mind you could record your audio over the top of the video. I'm not sure how much that would be used, but if you have a need for it, great. The audio notes, however, I think have a, a, a great purpose. If you want to make an announcement in the video because uh, the sub is going to be showing it, or maybe you need to elaborate on something that was shown in the video. You click on the speaker, you click on that microphone, and at this point um, it's going to record an audio comment, maybe an announcement or an explanation, not some elaboration, and then I just hit stop. So when the kids play that back, the video is going to pause there and play your audio announcement, and I can add as many as I would like just by clicking on that and recording my voice. Again, you'll have to allow it to use your microphone and maybe allow it up here on the top. Then when you're done, hit stop. So each time the student uh, hits that, they're going to hear an audio announcement that you make, some explanation, elaboration, that sort of thing. I think you'll primarily use the uh, question mark here, and right now it's going to have to render the sound recordings that I just made, and depending on how long they are, it may take a minute um, to do that. So I'll just wait here for a few seconds um, as it renders the audio that I just added to that video clip. Um, to add the questions, you just click on the question mark here, move the playhead to the relevant point in the video where you want to ask the question, and then just click on the question mark. You can ask open-ended questions, multiple choice questions, or you can insert a text comment with a web link. So I'll just do an open-ended question, and I'll just say, what is uh, leadership? And now my students will be able to answer that question. It won't be graded automatically as a teacher. You'll need to grade that, but at least you can look at their answers, and uh, hopefully, um, depending on their answer, you'll have some idea of whether or not they were actually paying attention to the movie. And then I'll hit Done and continue. And then I'll pause that again and I can move my playhead to the next relevant spot where I want to ask a question and again click on the question mark. This time I might do multiple choice. Who can be a great leader? Notice that there is a picture. Uh, you can add pictures and equations uh, to the questions and then down here you would type the possible answers and you can have as many correct answers as you want. And so I'll just go ahead and type in three answers that are all correct. And you could specify to students they need to answer more than one correct answer. They'd have to get all of these right in order to get credit for it. And again, I could just hit Done and uh, Continue. And then here I could do, maybe I want to add a comment. So I click on my question mark, do a comment. Maybe I need them to go visit some website during the video. And then here I would just paste, uh, I would paste in the address of the website that I want them to visit. So in this case, I'll just have them go to uh, PBS to look at something. And then I'll hit OK. So again, that's going to stop the video and bring up that comment, and click, kids would be able to click on that link and go to PBS. So I'd add as many uh, comments and questions as I need. And um, finally, when I'm finished, I'll click on this purple door. I give it a name, I give it a subject, or give it a language, I can give it a tag, and I hit save. Now I've already made these classes, I can assign it to whatever class I've made, so I'll assign it to my period 5 class, and um, I can prevent skipping if I don't want them to be able to fast forward to the questions and just answer the questions. I can also put a due date on this video, and a time, and then I can save the assignment. Okay. Now, uh, you'll notice that when you make these classes, it gives you this code, and that's how your students are going to enter the class and uh, see the videos that you've made. Um, to add your own class, you just click on My Classes, Add Class, and you can just call it probably by the period number. And you would pick a subject and a grade level. Um, the videos that you upload are public, um, so people can view those, but 
they won't be able to take the quizzing questions. At least they won't interfere with the, the data that you're collecting on your class. So I'll hit Save Class. And now you can see I have a period six class that I could assign work to. And you notice that it gives me a new code. Kids should only have to type that code in once. And then for the rest of the quarter, they'll um, see that class whenever they log into their um, Ed Puzzle. All right, so um, what does it look like uh, for kids when they come in and sign in? I'll just preview it with this little eyeball. And kids will see this on their screen. They'll just hit their play button. And each time they hit one of these marks on the uh, timer, they'll get the question, what makes a great leader? They'll type their answer here. I've already done it. So you can see it's done and it was counted correct. And then they would hit continue. It's just going to play that video. And in each time that they uh, hit one of these question marks, it's going to ask them for an answer. And you can see when I hit that uh, flag, it brought up the question, who can be a great leader? You can see I've already answered those. Um, I did that in training, and then they would just continue and go through the, the video. So that's what it looks like to the students, really easy to um, use for the student. And then I'll go back, and what do the results look like? So you can look at the uh, progress. So you can see who's watched it, um, who hasn't. You can see the, the grade that it assigns, and if you want to drill down on a person because maybe you're at a conference, um, you can actually see how far they've watched into the video, so you can kind of keep track track of things when you're away from your class, which is, I think, a neat idea. Um, the open-ended questions, as a teacher, you have to come in and mark those correct um, before it will uh, give the student the final score, but the multiple choice questions are scored automatically. Um, let's see, if I, if I go back to my class, the, the final thing that I'd like to show is under the um, My Content, you can create what's called a project. And that's going to um, allow your students to turn things back into you. So I'll just call it Leadership. And you would put the goal of the project here. And you would give your students instructions about finding or making a video uh, that demonstrates uh, leadership or whatever the topic is that you're studying. And then you could say, uh, please add questions. So what this is going to do is uh, allow your um, kids then uh, to make their own video with questions and turn it back into you, which is, I think is a powerful idea. So that was the last thing. So hope give uh, Ed Puzzle a try. I think you'll like it. And uh, thanks for watching this week's High Tech Friday.